joy. George Burns and Gracie Allen on a show when his orchestra was singing glee with a smoothie sweet. Last but not least, and who is Bud Heaston? Phone your Aunt Matilda. Tell them it's time for Burns and Allen. And when you want to fill the chairs around your table in double quick time, tell the family there's baked Spam for dinner. Spam, S-P-A-M, is tender, delicious, easy-to-serve meat. Originated by Hormel, Spam has a flavor and a quality all its own. There's nothing quite like it, nothing that tops its flavor because Spam is sweet, juicy pork shoulder meat combined with tender, tasty ham. So give your family baked Spam. Just open the can, take out the meat, and bake for a few minutes. The easy directions are right on the label, along with other recipes for serving Spam cold or hot. Millions of families have found Spam delicious meat that's economical and easy to use. Ask your food dealer for S-P-A-M, Spam, when you shop tomorrow. And now for Spam's meat heart, Gracie Allen and George Mink Coat Burns. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, Bud, you can stop being such a comic, and that goes for everybody here. I don't want to hear any more about the mink coat I gave away last week. All right, let's stop talking about it. Good. You mean the one you gave Cabina Wright Jr.? Yes, and I don't want to talk about it. About what? The mink coat I gave Cabina Wright Jr. And why do you keep bringing it up? I didn't bring it up. You're to blame for the whole thing. I didn't expect it to accept the coat. I merely wanted to think that I was a big shot, and what happened? You had to talk her into it. Oh, that's all right, George. You can do something for me sometime. Gracie, you don't understand. Did anybody ever invite you out to dinner knowing that you couldn't accept it? Saturday night. Good. The food was delicious. No, did any fella ever say to you, Gracie, let's go out on the balcony and look at the moon, knowing all the time that there was no moon? Yeah, some smart alley tried that on me once, and boy, did I fall. No moon, huh? No balcony. <laughs> well, whether you understand it or not, that was a $5,000 coat, and I've got to get it back. Ah, Judge, there's no use crying over spilt mink. <laughs> Spilt mink? Yeah. That's right, George. Cabina Wright Jr. was nice enough to invite us all to her party tonight. If you're going to mope about losing $5,000, you're going to spoil our whole evening. Spoil your whole evening? Well, George always does that. Just two weeks ago, we were invited to a lawn party, and George was the only one who came without a lawnmower. And, and, and... Tracy, just a minute. That's another thing I just as soon forget. Going into a swimming pool with a tuxedo on. Going in? I was pushed in. Yeah, and I'm sorry I did it. You did it? Yeah, you aren't even a good sport, staying at the bottom of the pool sulking. Sulking? I was drowning. Well, that's even worse. Why show off? Nobody else was doing it. Gracie, I can't swim. So what? Why stay, to, stay at the bottom of the pool? That's nothing to be ashamed at. Ashamed at? Yeah, of. Of, I see <laughs> I told you, I didn't want to talk about it. And that language you used down there was shocking. Gracie, I was, th I was at the bottom of the pool. How could you hear what I was saying? I'm a bubble reader. <laughs> well, this on top of that $5,000 mink coat certainly puts me in a great mood for Cabina Wright's party tonight. Oh, gee, I can't wait to get there, George. Uh, is Cabina Wright's mother really a leader of the 400? That's right, bud. Well, just think. A real society party. I wonder if it'll be as exciting as it looks in the magazine ads. Oh, yeah, society is more fun than any place. Yes. What? Well, imagine eating with real community plate silver. But right now, I'm thinking of something much more important. A certain young lady is wearing it, and it amounts to a neat little figure. Well, thanks, George, and I didn't even think you noticed my dress. 
<laughs> Your dress. And yeah. imagine eating Spam between a Vanderbilt and an Aster. Well, it's also good between rye bread and a pickle. It's nice spicy stuff. Yeah. Look, uh, you're all talking about parties and clothes. Nobody is interested in the mess I'm in. I am, George. Of course, the sleeves are too long, but then again, the pants are too short. But outside of that, I look fine. Yeah. Now, and now if you can get somebody just to press it, it'll only bag at the knees. And I always say... Never mind. Never mind what Hello, you George. always say. Hiya, George. How's the old fur trapper? <laughs> fur trapper? Yep. Every time you open your trap, you lose a fur. <laughs> look, frenzy. What? <laughs> what should I have given her? A clarinet? George, were you afraid you'd lose Cabina if you didn't give her a mink coat? Leave Cabina out of this. I've got lots of girls, and I can keep my women. Well, I've seen them, brother, and you ain't kidding. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Artie Shaw's band laughing at Artie Shaw's joke. As arranged by Lenny Hayton. Say, <laughs> Artie, at Cabina's party tonight, how many dances are you going to have with me? Well, gee, Gracie, I'm afraid your program will be full. Oh, well, I never eat so much that I can't dance. Artie, make up your mind. Are you going to dance with... Are you going to dance or not? Oh, please, Judge, I asked him first. <laughs> I'm asking for you. Well, it won't do you any good because I'm dancing with Artie. Oh, please. What about it, Artie? Well, I'd like to, Gracie, but I've got a sore heel. Well, she can dance with George. <laughs> Gracie, don't let him four flush. No, I won't. We'll two step. Yeah, that's not half the dance the four flush is. Bueno, y a mí por qué no me invitaron a la fiesta? ¿Qué no cuento yo aquí o qué pasa? Pero yo también sé. We're back in Mexico again. That's the guitar player. What is it, Senor Lee? I wasn't invited to the party tonight, and I'm an insult. <laughs> Well, that's an outrage. Senor Lee, if I were you and didn't get an invitation, I wouldn't accept it. Am I hearing right? Don't worry. I'll get in by hook or crook. You mean you'll get in by hook or crook? You get in your way and I'll get in my way. Well, look, Senor Lee, do what I do. I've got a great system for getting into parties. I go to the door and I ring the bell and I say to the butler, I want to see somebody inside. And he says, Who? And I say me. <laughs> but, Gracie, that system could never work. I know, but that's the only thing wrong with it. <laughs> yes, do that, senor. I know how to get in. I'll disguise myself as a foreigner. <laughs> a foreigner? Si, sí, senor. I'll make out I'm a duke. A duke? Si. Sí. What does a duke say? Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> What a duke says. Well, I've had enough. I'm only interested in one thing. I want to get back my mink coat. Well, if you want to get it back, why don't you get to the party? You just ask Cobina a riddle. Want to start that again? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't hear very well, huh? Well, let's see. What did you say? Ah, I said, if you want to get it back, when you get to the party, just ask Cobina a riddle. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> a riddle? Yeah. You say, Cobina... What's the difference between a mink coat and a cup of coffee? Yes. And she'll say, I don't know. As long as she doesn't know, you'll give her a cup of coffee and take the mink coat. It's all very simple. Well, I say what's the matter. Now the smoothies, Babs, Charlie, and Little will sing Sweet and Low. <laughs> Listen to my 
Sleep and rest, oh, sleep and rest, oh. Father will come to thee soon, here by the light of the moon. Blow, blow, breeze, why don't you blow? Wind of the west, western sea. Again, to me, to me, to me, while my little one, while my pretty one sleeps, while baby sleeps. Well, when we get to the party, I'm going to get that mink coat back. I'll just tell her the truth. Well, come on, everybody, let's go. Where's Gracie? Oh, well, right there, George. <laughs> oh, isn't this a scream? Look what my brother Willie says in his letter. <laughs> we haven't got time to listen to your brother Willie's letter. Oh, he's in the army, you know. I know he's in the army, but we're on our way to a party, you Oh, see? good. Well, then I'll read the letter at the party. All right, read it at the party. Yeah, I will. Yes. Dear Gracie. Look, Gracie. <laughs> Gracie, we, we, we haven't got time. Well, it won't take long. Willie writes very fast. Oh, he's a fast writer. Yes. Dear Gracie. Writes, writes a very quick hand. Yes. Dear Gracie, period, comma, question mark, exclamation point, hyphen, apostrophe, semicolon, colon, dash. Well, uh, what's all that for? Well, Willie doesn't know how to punctuate, so he puts it all at the top, and then I fit it in where it belongs. <laughs> uh, dear well, Gracie... that's a very smart letter. Well, look, Gracie, let's get to the party. Dear Gracie, yeah. you notice that I'm not at, uh, Fort Rosencrantz anymore. Lieutenant Ward transferred me to Camp Ord because it's easier to spell. Well, that's nice. And yesterday... Ord is easier than yes. Rosencrantz. And yesterday, during a sham battle, I captured a light armor tank. Yes. And it bit off two of my fingers before I discovered it was a snapping turtle. Gracie, uh, your brother must be a first-class dope. He is. But he'd rather be a cop. I see what you mean, yes. Gracie, I don't want to offend Bessie, but ask her to stop sending me those chocolate-covered mothballs. Just a second. Uh, your, your sister Bessie sent him chocolate-covered mothballs? Yeah, isn't that silly? And she knows he likes them covered with caramel. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and Gracie, I've been eating a lot of macaroni and donuts, and it gave me asthma and hiccups, so I was transferred to the Fife and Drum Corps. <laughs> Signed, Willie. Look, I'm glad it's over. Come on, everybody. Let's get to the party. P.S. Oh, some more. Hmm? By the way, Gracie, I sent you the top sergeant's right shoe. Will you have Daddy try it on for size before I send you the other one? <laughs> Is the letter finished now? Yeah. Well, let's get stopped. Yeah. Gee, I hope we have a nice time at the party. I hope those society people don't ritz us and give us the pork shoulder. <laughs> Look, Bud, uh, don't be so self-conscious. I wasn't invited and... I wasn't invited until the last minute. Yeah, the ham meat was added. <laughs> All right, wise guy. Just stick to those ribs. <laughs> well, now, come on, boys. Let's go. Let me see. Who will I go with? But have you got a car? No. Gracie, I've got a car. Artie, have you got a car? Nope. Gracie, I've got a car. Well, come on, boys. We walk. <laughs> well, let's go, everybody. Goodbye, Senor Lee. Oh, you'll see me. I'll be there. I'll get in by Hickor Creek. Oh, yes, you will. I'll disguise myself like Dr. Kildare. They'll open the door and say, Hiya, Doc. Hmm. And what will the Doc say? Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> okay, I'll see you there by Hickor Creek. Oh, come on. Well, wait a minute. There's somebody at the door. Come in. Mr. Burns, remember me. I'm Mr. Randall, the Fourier. I let you have that mink coat on approval last week. You wanted it for five days, and it's now seven, so I thought I'd drop in either for the check or for the coat. Well, I'm sorry. Mr. Burns isn't here, are you, Doc? <laughs> Quiet, uh, Mr. Randall, will you just give me a few more days? Gladly. Well, I don't think George will need a few days. With the system I've got, he'll be able to get the coat back tonight, even if he has to steal it. What did you say? Steal it. Steal it! <laughs> now, Randall, don't get excited. Don't get excited. I've got a right to get excited. You got $5,000 worth of four off of me. <laughs> What did he use, an electric razor? <laughs> Randall, I'm not going to steal your coat. No, Mr. Randall, George doesn't have to steal coats. No. No, he just gets them on approval and doesn't pay for them, like a gentleman. <laughs> Look, Artie, stop helping me. 
Yeah, Artie, if George wants someone to talk like a numbskull, he can do it himself. Look, Mr. Randall, will you wait here? I'm going to a party at Cabina Wright's, and I'll get the mink coat and bring it right back. Well, all right. Now, well, you don't have to worry, Mr. Randall. You'll get that coat, and we have to bring it back a sleeve at a time. A sleeve at a time? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Borens, I'm going to that party with you. I'm not taking any chances. Well, Gracie, you've got things balled up nicely. Oh, it was nothing, George. You could have done the same thing yourself if you tried. Oh, will you stop? Uh, hey, Senor Burns, if this man goes to the party, then I can go too. I'm a furrier. You're a furrier? Sure, I'm a furrier. I haven't even taken out my first papers. <laughs> oh, a furrier, I see what you mean, yes. But don't worry, I'll get in by I hit a three. trick, I know. Randall, I can't take you to this party. How can I take a Fourier to a society party? Well... You give up? Well... Oh, I know a way. I thought so. We'll introduce him as Reginald Worthington Schuyler Bullock IV. Look, that's too long a name, and it sounds exaggerated. Well, then we'll call him Reginald Worthington Schuyler Bullock III. Well, that's much better and much, much shorter. <laughs> Now, Artie Shaw, his clarinet and his boys will play Old Rockin' Chair. Spam show, Bud Heaston speaking. Oh, hello. This is the chef at the home of Madame Cobino Wright. Is Monsieur George Burns available for the conversation? Well, no, not just now. Well, the butler have just informed me of a party. Oh, yes. I'm coming over right away, and the rest of them are on their way. Oh, c'est impossible. Je rien préparé. Uh, what will I do? I do not know how to serve on so short notice. Oh, boy, what an opening you left. Uh, Qu'est-ce que c'est? Well, you want to serve a really scrumptious meal and do it quickly? Oh, oui. Then oui. give us spam. Uh, what, spam? That's right. S-P-A-M, spam. Now, listen. 
Just send the third assistant keeper of the pantry right over to the grocery store, get some cans of Spam, and get plenty, because Spam is a meat that keeps without refrigeration, Sheffy old boy. Now, here's the way you prepare baked Spam. First, open the can of Spam. Do I open it? Yes, that's very important. Then take a handful of cloves and stud the top of the meat with them. That's right. Then put the Spam in a shallow baking dish. Now, pop it into the oven and bake it. There's a swell brown sugar sauce described on the label of the can if you want to baste it with a dressing. And there's your main course, done in a jiffy. And your guests will love it. Spam is tender, juicy meat because it's a perfect blend of pork shoulder meat with ham meat added. And when you take it out of the oven, chef, you can be sure that you have a pièce de résistance, a main course that is so delicious, so taste-tempting, so ooh-la-la that your party is bound to be a success. So take my advice and prepare a Spam bake tonight. Ah, Monsieur Histon, you are magnifique. Voilà, it shall be done. Voici, we'll be right over. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. George, I'm having a wonderful time at this party. This gentleman here is a wonderful dancer. And we must have the next dance, too. I'd love to, madam, but I've got to go back and polish the silverware. Oh. <laughs> Gracie, that man is the butler. The butler? Did you notice he was carrying a load of drinks? Well, you could never tell that he danced like he was perfectly sober. <laughs> Well, quiet. Here comes Cabina. Now, don't forget, George. Just uh, get her alone and tell her the truth. It's bound to work. It had better work. Relax, Furry. And don't forget your name is Bullock. No, I'll get her outside alone. Oh, there you are. You all having a nice time? Oh, well, yeah. Well, can't drive, well, Cabina. Well, 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 George, is there anything I can get you? Yeah, mink coat. Uh, quiet. <laughs> Uh, Cabina, Cabina, could I see you alone for oh, a minute? Oh, gee, I've never been to such I... a swell party. Thanks, Gracie. See, who's that attractive-looking girl over there with a the freckle? Oh, uh, that's Elizabeth Brown. Her father has millions. Oh, yeah, he ought to carry a parasol. <laughs> uh, Cabina, could I see hey, you alone Cabina, for... is there any way of brushing off that silly dame who's been chasing me? There she is over there. Mr. Shaw, that happens to be my aunt. Oh, uh, well, I, I didn't mean her. I mean the fat one next to her with the bobbed hair. That's my uncle. Boy, can he dance. <laughs> uh, Cabina, could I see you alone hey, Cabina, for a minute? Hey, Cabina, who's that tall, good-looking fellow standing over there examining the silverware? Uh, oh, it's Bud Heaston. You, Bud! Hey, hey, Gracie, it's real community play. Is Cabina. it? Gracie, you've tried Spam with eggs, haven't you? Oh, yes, and it's delicious. Well, try it with real silverware. It's wonderful. Really? Look, it, it isn't polite to yell, bud. What? It isn't polite to yell. What? Hey, it ain't polite to yell. Uh, who was that? Uh, my mother. Hmm. Cabina, could I Come see Come here, mother. Alone? I want you to meet some of my friends. This is George Burns. Oh, well, how do you do? George Burns? Why, Cabina, you're wrong. He doesn't look so old. <laughs> um, old? <clears throat> Mother, this is Miss Allen. How do you do, Miss Allen? <laughs> you're Miss Allen. Then who am I? <laughs> Miss... Mrs. Wright, you'll have to excuse Gracie. She's pretty silly. Oh, that's nothing. I'm even pretty when I'm not silly. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. And, Mother, this is Artie Shaw. How do you do? Hello. And this is Bud Heaston. How do you do? Hello. And this is uh, uh, a friend of George's. He he's a polo player. I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. So have I. <laughs> Mrs. Wright, he's Mr. Bullock. You know the Bullocks. Oh, the Bullock family. Oh, certainly. What branch are you? Seventh and Broadway. <laughs> well, anyway, it's really a pleasure to be here, Mrs. Wright. And Mr. Burns, I want to thank you for that adorable little coat you gave Cabina. Do you know it looked like real mink? <laughs> it looks like real mink. <laughs> Do you know how long it takes to make a coat like that? Bullock, Bullock. Do you know that this girl has one of the best skins in Hollywood? Well, maybe she uses mud packs. Mm. 
George, why is this Mr. Bullock so interested in my fur coat? Well, you see, Cabina, he's sort of a collector of furs. You mean he collects minks? Yeah, either that or the $5,000. <laughs> Look, Cabina, could I see you alone for a... right. What is it, Jenkins? There's a very dear friend of Mr. Burns waiting to see him in the library. What's his name? I don't know, sir. Uh, what did he say? Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> That's Senor Lee, our guitar player. Mrs. Wright, could you please ask him to go? I'll see to it right away. Well, thank you. Cabina, could I see you out in the garden alone? Why, certainly, George. Miss Wright, here's your mink coat you rang for. I didn't ring for it. Well, somebody did. Well, who wants to talk about my brother? <laughs> well, Cabina, would you like to have me take it upstairs? No, I'll wear it out in the garden. Oh, you are going to wear it out in the garden? Yes, Mr. Bullock. May I slip these mothballs in the pocket? <laughs> mothballs? I thought he was a polo player. Well, he is, you see. He plays miniature polo. He uses a very small mallet. <laughs> Say, George, George. You better get that coat back before the styles change. Well, just leave it to me. Cobina, dear. Yes, Mother? Take care of our guests and see that they have a good time. I'm going out. Why, Mother, you look wonderful with all your jewels on. Yeah, you're prettier than Hollywood Boulevard. Quiet. <laughs> Mother, who are you going out with? Frank Vandalip or Gregory Thorndike? Neither one. Well, then with whom? Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> uh... Cabina, could I see you outside? George, what's on your mind tonight? Something seems to be troubling you. Well, sure there's something on his mind. How would you like it if your best friend was a polo player named Bullock and his name turned out to be Randall? Gracie. If a thing like that happened to you, Cabina, you'd jump out of your skin. And if you did, I bet George would grab it and Randall would grab George. Oh, quiet. <laughs> quiet. Look, Cabina, last week you said a nice girl shouldn't accept a coat from a fellow she just met. And I agree with you. You're so sweet to admit it, George, that I'm going to keep it. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, Gracie. George faded. How can we revive him? We'll just throw a mink coat in his face. <laughs> Don't forget to put Spam on your shopping list tomorrow. Originated by Hormel, Spam is absolutely the most popular new meat item brought out in a generation. A perfect combination of pork shoulder and ham, this delicious meat is a, in a handy can has become a mealtime mainstay in millions of homes. If you haven't yet tried Spam, do so tomorrow. You're really missing something extra good because cold or hot, Spam really hits the spot. Ask your food dealer for Spam. Ladies and gentlemen... Oh, Gracie, say goodnight. No, well, goodnight. That's right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we leave tonight, and our next broadcast will come from Chicago. George, you can't leave yet. Why not? I gave the man the checks for the trunks. I gave him the check for the suitcase. Yeah, but you forgot to give the man the check for the fur coat, if you know what I mean. Oh, good night. Good night, <laughs> again next week, same time, same station, for another Burns and Allen show with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the smoothies. This is Bud Heaston speaking for Hormel and Spam, reminding you to remember that cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? Even those who think they don't like chili do like Chili Con Carne the way Hormel makes it because it's different and everybody likes it. 
Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 